everyone and welcome back to another procurement and finance coffee break. I'm Claire Green, I'm your finance transformation expert and all round accounting guru and I'm here with Richard Bowermont who's a procurement guru hey. and also um, uh, a lover of everything to do with ESG and today I am discussing with him the EU Corporate Sustainability Reporting Directive of which I know zero so <laughs> So I'm going to ask Richard some questions and hopefully I'll be enlightened along the way. Well, I'm delighted. <laughs> so, Richard, to start us off, can, so it's the EU Corporate Responsibility Sustainability Reporting Directive, that's a bit of a mouthful, we're going to call it CSRD for sure. CSRD, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So can you oh. explain what it is and how it relates to other legislation like Scope 3 and the German Supply Chain Act? Right. And um, this is going to be a matter close to your heart because, you know, a couple of a couple of coffee breaks ago, we were talking about capital market readiness. Mm -hmm. uh, and certainly for companies that are subject to CSRD, this is going to be a really important part of their readiness for market. And, and look, OK, so what is it? It's new, a new EU legislation. It actually was ratified earlier this year. I can't remember if it was March or April, but it was it's it's that fresh. It's taken a long time to come in. <clears throat> it essentially expands the scope of existing uh, non-financial reporting directives. And its purpose is to get large companies to report more broadly and consistently <clears throat> with environmental social governance ESG issues so that there is that consistency, transparency, and, and just like we talked about with financial account uh, reporting practice, to ensure consistency and comparability of sustainability information across different businesses, which of course is important to investors, it's important to stakeholders, it's important to regulators. And, and the outcome is really simple. It is, you know, better corporate accountability for uh, ESG matters and to ensure that achieving the right outcomes in ESG are built into business strategies. So it's a fundamental directive affecting large companies in the EU that will transform the way that they work and the way that they report and you know it's as as we talked about i, I chaired a conference on esg reporting uh, earlier this year you know it doesn't start from scratch you know there's plenty of existing legislation out there scope three emissions being one of the bigger ones and, you know, scope three is now we've, we've been through scope one, which is about what you do, scope two about the broader activity, scope three about your supply chain and reporting emissions across that entire supply chain. Well, the information that you're reporting under scope three encapsulates um, uh, what you're required to report in CSRD. So you can almost look at the existing reporting as building blocks that are going to contribute to the totality of, you know, CSRD, CSRD reporting. So it's it's a big deal. It will start with big companies. It's going to transform what they report, but also what they do. And I think, you know, the, the big thing for me is never to forget that we're not you know, a bit like financial reporting, you know, we're not doing it because we want to report. We're reporting on what we want to do. And it's a bit like, you know, the example I gave um, at the conference is, look, if there's a if there's a, you know, a, a, a bomb disposal team and they're dealing with, you know, they're trying to make a, I don't know, a, an old wartime bomb safe. Out front, there's going to be some spokesman or police leader or whatever who's going to be there talking to the press and updating them on the progress. What that spokesperson doing is reporting on the progress of the activity that matters, which is actually making the bomb safe. And I think it's always important to remember because people get very hung up about, goodness me, you know, CSRD is going to bring in 
an ever greater reporting workload, actually, that's not what it's for. What it's for is to ensure that you do report on the things that you should be doing in your business to drive, um, you know, to drive better ESG outcomes, both internally and across your supply chain, which is what we want. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think it, it's always it's always a risk that we become very focused on what have I got to report by end of month? And it's the same, in, you know, in your world, you were talking about, you know, um, you know, end of month reporting under IFRS. We don't run a business to do end of month reporting. We run a business to deliver value to, you know, to shareholders. And, and the reporting is just something that we do to demonstrate the progression towards that value. It's yeah. exactly the same with CSRD. The value is better ESG outcomes. CSRD just drives the reporting of our progress towards that value, which is a completely good thing. But it will affect your world because, you know, my observation is that in many large organisations, it is the CFO that is picking up the responsibility for reporting in Europe, certainly for reporting under CSRD. So that's what it is. And that, that's why it matters. And uh, this applies to both EU companies and non-EU companies with significant operations in Europe, um, as um, I understand it. Yeah, exactly. And, and and it's, you know, it's like the German Supply Chain Act, you know, the German Supply Chain Act, um, you know, it doesn't care where your company's based. If you've got, I think the, it's reduced now, it started at 3,000 people working in Germany, now if it's 1,000. So if you've got an operation in Germany, of a thousand people, then you're now having to report under the German Supply Chain Act. I believe CSRD is the same approach, which is, you know, if you're operating and reporting an entity within Europe and you meet you meet the large company criteria, then you're going to be reporting under CSRD. So it's again, it's one of those things like, um, you know, uh, G- GDPR, Mm. Uh, German supply chain app, which is European in origin, but actually has global impacts yeah. because yeah. of the way you know large companies operate. So, OK, that's quite a lot to take in. What does it yeah. mean for companies? What are the main implications um, pragmatically in running a company they, they need to be aware of? I, to be honest, I, I, I really quickly, I just say, it, you know, there are three really big impacts. The first one, obviously, is an increased reporting requirement because you're going to reporting on a wide range of ESG um, factors and the accuracy and supporting data behind that reporting is more comprehensive than it's been. And certainly, you know, that um you know, you've talked about materiality in finance. Uh, what it means in ESG is a, is, a, is a move towards the kind of same level of materiality and visibility and auditability of that data, but in the ESG domain. So really, you know, it's it's a bit like we talked about way back, I think, in our second ever procurement and finance coffee break when we talked about ISSB being the sister of I you know um uh, um uh, IFRS that ISSB one and two is introducing reporting well actually all CSRD does is take really a lot of the content and standards that those contain and bundles it up into an applicable regulation for EU companies so it's really like I said, bringing the same standards and quality and consistency of reporting that everyone's familiar with, with finance mm. into the world of ESG, which are, personally I just think is is a really good thing. Um, okay. And obviously, you know, that's the second challenge, scope, because mm. this does affect EU businesses, but it affects non-EU businesses with EU operations. Um, and of course, now that it's a regulation, non-compliance can lead to penalties and reputational damage. So, you know, you've gone from the world of, you know, people having a small section in their annual report about what they're doing for people and planet. You know, many companies without CSRD started a much bigger journey towards, you know, recognising the importance and really making very positive efforts to do it. Actually. 
CSRD now is going to compel everyone to do it. And there's a whip if you don't. And, you know, in the same way that, you know, a financial reporting scandal is bad for business, going forward, a CSRD ESG reporting scandal is going to be bad for business. And I, and I, I just think that's OK. They're challenges, but actually, you know, they they are supporting a change that is long overdue. Mm -mm. OK, finally, Richard, what can yeah. companies do to ensure that they comply with CSRD and are generally prepared for its implementation? Well, the good news is you're going to recognise this because this is very similar to the advice you yeah. gave about yeah. gap conversion, yeah. because it's look, it's just another big project. It doesn't matter what the title is. But, you know, I would I, I would just come back to four key things start early this is a big deal and i can assure you that you know if if the differences in financial technology financial data reporting method is challenging in a large organization if you start talking about esg you're talking about a whole new level of complexity because there are going to be some parts of a large organisation that have got this absolutely under control. And there will be some parts of the organisation that have literally done nothing. <laughs> so starting early allows you, exactly as you advise for gap conversion, to take stock of your baseline and work out a plan that takes that, you know, that baseline into account. Secondly, you cannot do this without technology. I mean, it just can't. I, I genuinely believe it can't be done. And the reason for that is if we think about the kind of things that we're going to be reporting, all the different um, environmental measures, CO2, water consumption, chemical. Getting that data back across your supply chain, scope three has shown how difficult it is to work out the CO2 impact of a tier six, seven, eight supplier. But you're going to have to be gathering data for all of the, of the environmental measures. Imagine that without tech. <clears throat> it's just it isn't possible to do. And I think, you know, one of the really big challenges, um, you know, for technology and data is is consistency. You know, how are supplier A, supplier B, supplier C measuring and reporting their data and are you confident that when you're saying well i've done it consistently that the data you're bringing in is consistent and that's going to be a really big transformation that's going to take time um next up uh stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, it's fair to say that different stakeholders if you go into any organization today you will get a different reaction from different stakeholders about how important uh, ESG is. Very different to what you'd get on money. And, and certainly it's a really, I mean, this is a terrible generalization, but I'm going to make it. You know, when I train procurement professionals in Europe and I train procurement professionals in North America, in North America, they are super focused on diversity because the federal law has required them to do so. Not so much on sustainability in the EU, super focused on sustainability, less so on diversity because that's where the regulation has focused. So educating and bringing stakeholders to understand why this matters and what their part in it is really important and i guess look last up you know we've chatted to a number of um of people over the over the past finance uh, you know coffee breaks about reporting and consistency of data there is real expertise out there and in the same way that we need to leverage technology i genuinely believe that you need to leverage expertise to enable you to even begin to develop a plan in the first place. So that that would be my, you know, my four big things. Start early, use technology, get the stakeholder engagement up and running and get expert help. 
Okay, great. Thanks, Richard. It's clear then that CSRD is going to have a major impact on how companies operate and report sustainability. Yep. And for those that are listening, make sure your company is uh, ready for those changes. And until next time, uh, keep innovating and driving excellence in your organisation. And we look forward to talking to you on another procurement and finance coffee break. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.